Hi everyone, um, I'm recording this video uh, as a quick walkthrough of how to use my Shiny app, a new measure of public transit accessibility. So once the app loads, and just give it a little while to load since it's pretty memory intensive, the data sets um, being used are pretty huge. Once it does load, you'll come to this page. This introduction tab just gives a really high level snapshot of what the whole project's about. It gives some background, literature, methodology, how the uh, data are collected and treated. Um, yeah, but in a nutshell, what I'm trying to do is basically create this new measure of public transit accessibility using a route optimization engine, in this case, Google's Directions API. So imagine you're going from place A to B, right? You, you might get out your phone and ask Google Maps, how do I get there? And Google Maps will return you some pretty detailed route information. So I use that idea, but just replicate it uh, half a million times um, so that I can get route information covering an entire geographic area, in this case, Brooklyn. Um, so for every census block group in Brooklyn, I request um, route information to every uh, accessible higher education institution in the greater New York area, which includes New Jersey. And I request it once in the morning and once in the evening uh, so that some of that measurement errors is even down. Um, yeah, so, and, and through all that information, I'm able to calculate a measure of public transit accessibility as it varies between block groups in, in, in Brooklyn, right? Um, but of course, this analysis doesn't need to be limited to Brooklyn. It could be over a much wider geographic area. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be higher education institutions. It could be other types of public services that are policy relevant. You know, we might be interested in public transit access to hospitals, for example. And uh, it doesn't need to be through Google's Directions API. It could be through OpenStreetMaps or Graphhopper or Radar or, you know, there are a bunch of these out there now. So this app is more like a, a proof of concept using the specific use case of uh, public transit accessibility to higher education institutions. So at a high level, that's what it's all about. Um, but also, you know, this, this app's designed to be um, flexible, customizable for this particular use case. So researchers and policymakers that are interested in this uh, public transit higher ed nexus can actually uh, use this app. They'll find it useful. Um, they'll be able to use the filters to actually produce and download data from this shiny app that can they can then use in their in their own work or or, or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's 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 designed to be a proof of concept, but also useful and and interesting for this particular case. So moving on. Um, these usage instructions are kind of the written, um, slightly condensed version of what I'm going to go through in this video. Um, but yeah, you can you can fall back on this. Um, our first time user should find uh, all of this pretty straightforward. I've tried to, I've tried to be fairly detailed um, with these instructions, so you could probably just get away with reading this. But but yeah, um, moving on. This, this tab, this accessibility measures tab is the meat and potatoes of the, the Shiny app. This is the main thing. So on the left-hand side, you've got the filters. So the filters, there are two classes of filters. Uh, one set of filters is on the institutions that are under consideration, uh, and one set of filters on the trips. So in the institution side, you can filter the institutions by the size, uh, what sector it's in, so public uh, or private for or nonprofit, uh, degree level, whether it's a two or a four year, what degree types are on offer, and um, this Carnegie classification is kind of more granular. You know, you can narrow it down to arts and design schools, music, special focus, whatever. So yeah, uh, this enrollment slots toggle I'll come back to later. But moving on, the trip filters. So as I mentioned, um, I requested the API route information in the morning and in the evening. So you can choose which one you want to visualize, or you can choose both, and both just gives the average of the two. Then you can choose the time cutoff for trips. 
So, you know, the, the default here is 60 minutes. So this limits the data to trips that um, lasted 60 minutes or less. But, you know, depending on the specific context, you might want to adjust this, right? So suppose you're interested in trips um, only up to 30 minutes in duration, then you, you toggle this to, to 30, right? Or you might also be interested in trips that are much longer, so you can go up to 100 minutes here. But yeah, I'm just going to go back to the default, just 60. Um, below that, you've got a toggle on the maximum transfers. So that can be between one and five transfers. You know, um, you might take the train to Times Square and change to a bus. That counts as one transfer, right? So you might think that a trip with five transfers is a little bit impractical. So you might want to, you know, adjust this to four or three or whatever it is. So yeah, these these filters can be um, toggled to generate data and visualize data that are appropriate for, uh, you know, whatever the particular user is actually interested in studying. But I'm just going to go over the defaults here. Um, Oh, one other thing to say about these filters uh, is that, you know, th they are reactive to each other. So, for example, if I go ahead and select, say, two-year institutions here, um, the other filters will update to only allow me to select institutions that uh, make selections in these filters that uh, are compatible with the other filters. Because, you know, obviously we don't want to get to a situation where uh, there are we have a set of filters here that generates zero schools, right? Then in that case, the app won't run, it'll give an error and basically tell you to go and try again. But I've tried to um, make it so that you can't do that. So anyway, I'm just gonna go back to defaults. So select all and I'll click update. And this generates the visualization. So here you can see Brooklyn, here's all the block groups in Brooklyn and then the shading is uh, how many schools are accessible um, to each block group given these constraints, right, within 60 minutes. So you'll see that some block groups here in, in you know, Williamsburg or uh, Dumbo area can access up to 60 to 80 schools. Um, if I narrow this down, if I only allow, say, 30 minute trips, and I go ahead and update this, You'll notice that the number of schools is a lot less now, right? Since I updated the um, the, the filter to only allow um, trips of a much shorter duration. But yeah, so that's and of course, you know, the these can be toggled as well. So say I'm only interested in public um, institutions, I'll go and update this again, and the map will update. And you know now we've got even less schools, uh, but and more interesting patterns start to emerge. So this is a really really rich uh, data set for from policy making perspective. Um, so there's a lot that can be can be done here basically. Uh, in the map itself, there are a bunch of uh, things to point out. So you can choose which base map you want. You can have the OSM one or the S3 World Topper. Um, the grey one's probably a bit easier to visualize this pattern. I can also toggle on and off uh, MTA lines. Obviously, uh, if anyone that's been to or lives in New York understands that the subway is the main artery of uh, public transit, so it's often useful to have a look at how these accessibility measures um, correlate with you know, the clustering of subway lines. So you can see that it, the pattern here is pretty pretty clear. You, you know, the accessibility tracks the um, MTA lines pretty closely, but from a policymaker or researcher's perspective, you know, it might be more interesting to see where there are pockets of very high accessibility with no subway lines, for example, or pockets of very low accessibility despite there being an MTA line. Um, yeah, so that can be toggled on and off. You can click uh, on the, the line itself to get more information uh, about the, that subway line. And then, of course, you can also toggle on and off the schools. So these are the, the schools that you've basically filtered here, right? You can click on these dots, you can hover over them, and then you can also get more detailed information on, on, on the schools. And this data is from the iPads uh, database. All of that information can be found in the data dictionaries if you're interested. Hey, okay. cool. So that's that. Um, oh. 
you can also resize the map, bring it back to its original zoom, or you can search with an OSM geocoder, say I'm interested in you know, um, census block groups around Prospect Park, for example, I can select that, it'll take me here, and then, you know, I can play around uh, with that and see what the accessibility pattern is like around around there. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, moving on. So this plot um, shows the most frequent transit lines um, of all these routes, right? So you can see here that the G line is the most used one for this particular set of institution and trip filters, um, followed by L and then the number two line, and these colors match up to the uh, the, the subway lines. Um, I'm going to just expand the window a little bit <coughs> so that the plots uh, get a bit bigger. Hmm. Yeah, so now we can see all the labels, right? Um, yeah. Then on the right hand side, um, these are the agencies that are responsible. So you can see that's, you know, three quarters of the uh, trips uh, on the subway, which is managed by the MTA. Another more than a quarter is uh, on the MTA's bus system, with only a very tiny fraction from the Long Island Railroad. Um, yeah. That might also be interesting from a policy maker's perspective. Okay, and then down below here are all the data tables. This is all the underlying data, basically. So uh, there are four data tables here, which are explained in detail what all these variables mean uh, in the data dictionaries. But basically, uh, these are all the data at different levels of different units of observation. So the schools. Um, data table shows all the schools that are in your um, filtering, that match the filtering criteria that the users input. So there are 15 schools that match our criteria. Here's all the information about them. Um, here are the block groups. So this, these are the, the uh, measures of accessibility right here. So there are 2,066 block groups under consideration that I've made the, the API request for in both the morning and the evening, right? Um, and then these are the number of schools that are accessible within this set of trip constraints within 30 minutes in this case and with the maximum of three transfers. Uh, so this block group has seven accessible schools. Um, and yeah, this slot's accessible. This is the number of enrollments that are accessible. So it's basically like, think about it like this, awaiting, awaiting the, the schools by their size. Uh, where the size is measured in the number of enrolled students. And that actually takes me back to this toggle, use enrollments slots. So if I turn toggle this on and then update, now instead of showing me the number of schools accessible, it shows the number of enrollment slots accessible, uh, which also might be more interesting and relevant for uh, a policymaker. But you know, whether, you, whether the measure in terms of number of schools accessible or number of slots accessible um, uh, is also quite context dependent. But anyway, um, so that slot information is here. Uh, and then you've got in this block groups data table, the uh, filtering criteria are also stored here. So that's what I mean by design with intention that this data can be downloaded and kind of very rapidly applied um, and used by researchers, policymakers in their own context. So I've included the, uh, the filtering criteria here. Um, and of course, all of this data can be downloaded. So this button downloads all the displayed rows. So there's the 10, that's not very useful, uh, but here you can download all the rows. Um, yeah, uh, just be careful because sometimes for the trips and legs data, that can be up to two and a half million rows. Uh, so when you actually click this button, it might take a little while to, to process, but uh, fear not, it will it will download uh, eventually. <laughs> okay, uh, so moving on. This is the trip level data. So the unit of observation here is um, an origin destination pair combined with um, 
when the chip was taken, so origin destination in the morning. And of course, in this in this uh, um, filtering criteria, I've specified that I only want to return the morning chips, right? Um, but if I went and did both, for example, and update this. <clears throat> Uh, now the trips, <coughs> sorry, the block groups level data will actually, it'll show me the mean. This is the mean, uh, and there's the mean number of slots accessible, and that's the same data that's reflected in the maps. Um, and, uh, oh, in the trips level data, this is what I meant to say, uh, <coughs> is that it will return trip level data for both morning and evening runs. So I can filter this, see the evening data is also stored here. Yeah. Um, and then this information, th these variables are all detailed in the data dictionary. I won't go into that, but it's basically telling you how many uh, legs on each trip uh, fall into under the different you know, types of public transit, uh, when the trip starts and ends, uh, how much time is actually spent on the trip and how much is waiting. Uh, yeah. And then the leg level data. So this, uh, basically a trip, a, the constituent unit of a trip is a leg, right? So a leg could be like, uh, I walk to 110th subway station, and then another leg would be, I take the subway from 110 to Times Square, and then another leg, take the bus from Times Square to wherever. Um, so the unit of observation here is origin destination pair run and the leg number together uh, so those three things uniquely identify each observation in this data uh, table um, and then yeah so for each leg you can basically see whether it's a walking leg or a transit leg how long it took for um, how long each leg takes how far you're traveling as well if you're interested in that um, you know, I include that just because it might be interesting in another policy context, depending what you're studying, um, where it's leaving from and arriving. Um, so for walking, that that's not um, defined, but for transit legs, you know, that that's here. What agency is responsible? The line. Uh, what type of vehicle? How many stops? Uh, yeah. And yeah, this, this leg data is the longest of, of all. See here, there are 23,000 entries, depending on the filters. If you select all the filters with the maximum time cutoffs, this will be something like two and a half million uh, entries. So just, yeah, be, be aware of that when you download it. And these data tables are fully interactive and re reactive as well to all the inputs. Uh, you can search them and, and play with them and, and whatever. Okay, cool. So I think that's the everything for this um, accessibility measures tab. I'll move on to the analytics tab. And oh dear, I see that this video is already getting far too long. Um, but uh, we shall push ahead. So this tab um, basically allows the user to compare this school accessibility measure with some selected cross-cutting variables from the census. So that's taken from the American Community Survey that the five-year estimates in 2020, uh, and they're grouped by concept. So I've selected a bunch of concepts here that are kind of relevant for the public transit education nexus. So you've got you know, uh, race, population, income, ethnicity, uh, travel to work, um, all this data on you know educational entertainment uh, sorry education attainment um, what types of public transit people take to work um, yeah so for example I'll select uh, let's see I'll select means of transportation to work and I'll select um, public transportation okay uh, and then I'll say generate the map on the right is just a replica of what was in the previous tab. So that's the, the accessibility measures. And then when I click generate, it'll generate another map that's the same thing, but for the census data, right? Um, so here, uh, by default, it'll just show the raw estimate. So all the census data is, is in 
numbers of people. So, for example, in this particular block group here, um, 4,355 people um, have said that they take public transportation to work, right? Um, this might not be particularly meaningful because it's not adjusted for the size uh, population of each block group. So this toggle basically allows you to convert these um, numbers into percentage of the block group population. So I'll click generate again. This map will regenerate. Yeah, okay, so now here's a much uh, more interesting picture, right? So these are people taking public transit to work. They're kind of scattered across here, but you can more or less see that they correlate with the, the MTA lines as well pretty closely. You can also filter by, you know, if I'm interested in uh, people specifically that take the subway, I can choose that too. Public transit, subway, go generate. Now you can see that this is very strongly correlated with the MTA lines. Okay, but of course there are, there are lots of other things to explore here. Um, this is just a very obvious example. No reason this would be policy relevant, but you can imagine, you know, if you if you you could look at some other metrics here, like buses, for example, um, that might be interesting to compare this story with the accessibility story um, on the um, right hand panel. So yeah, this is just designed for comparison, and then to aid that even further, um, this scatter plot kind of plots the two measures. So it plots the census measure that you've just selected with the accessibility measure that's calculated on the previous um, panel, the previous tab. Yeah, and then you can flip this if you want. Obviously, you know here there's pretty clear pattern um, that. The more percentage of uh, people in a block group that use the subway uh, have more schools accessible to them. That's not surprising, but of course, a lot more richer investigation can, can be carried out here. And then this, again, just to facilitate ease of download so that um, policymakers, researchers can actually use this data in their own work. So this is just the joined accessibility data with the um, the sorry the um, census data Ooh. now here here's here it is sorry <laughs> here is the census data means of transportation to work estimate and the percent and then these are all the filters that are just stored here um, for reference um, yeah so that is it, and of course you can go back and change the 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 the, the schools that are under consideration. So I'll just go back for for fun and choose um, large schools with a very high number of enrollment that have a high research activity, doctor, master, and that are only the four-year institutions. Um, Cool, and I want to exclude uh, for-profit institutions. Um, can toggle this up a bit, update this. The transit lines. Okay, so now the six line is the most um, dominant. The subway is overwhelmingly dominant. Uh, you can see that it's pretty strongly correlated to the subway, um, Williamsburg, and kind of lower Brooklyn are quite well connected to the schools. Um, here are the schools under consideration. They're basically three schools in Manhattan. Um, there's the data again, and then I go back to my analytics tab, regenerate this uh, plot. Um, um, oops, I can choose an, a different variable if I want, say, not population, say race. Mm. Could choose black or African American, generate, and see what patterns emerge there. Um, race being an important cross cutting factor in all this. Uh, yeah, so, so that's, oh, this is perhaps not particularly meaningful, but yeah.
get the idea. And then the data here is also updated for the census data that I, I just selected, right? Okay, cool. That is, that's it. The data dictionaries tab, this is all um, explanation of what all of these variables mean, the units, um, how they're calculated, blah, blah, blah. And that that is it. So yeah, please do have fun using this, and I hope it's it's interesting use case. And um, yeah, if you have any feedback or recommendations, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. My email is on the um, down on on this page, and yeah, there's there's links to my GitHub, and all of this is stored on the on a public GitHub repo as well. So yeah, thanks thanks again. Bye.